Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel geography video. This is episode series where we talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today's geography video comes to you from the pearly gates of heaven, apparently. It's really bright here, so it's really white, which means I could be in heaven or I could be in Greenland, for example, based on how white that is when we look at a satellite map. Uh, in fact, when you look at a satellite map, you start to realize just how different countries are. When you see a non-colored map, it's like, yeah, every country's got the same land, basically. And it's like, no, there are yellow countries, there are really white uh, countries, Kind of like white yellow countries there are actual white snowy covered countries tree covered countries it's very very strange to look at and if only there was a map that could like average this out for us and of course there is because this is the average color of each country by erdavis.com and my my first question i have to ask ask here because this video is going to be about maps that raise questions in lots of weird ways you know they give you data but then they just make you ask more questions it's like why would someone do this this is a very interesting map to make because most countries you can get the same vibe just by looking at Google Maps, right? But I mean, you're not sure. This is a really interesting look at the average color of each country. You start to realize very quickly that most continents are pretty homogenous. Here's South America, mostly the same color besides Chile and Argentina, which do feel different, right? The color of a country, just physically speaking, not not talking about any ethnic uh, demographics or whatever, um, is going to be very different based on the physical color, it seems. I, I, I know it kind of like, does, it defines the culture in some small way. And that's why it's so interesting when we look specifically at Europe. As you can see, Europe is very, you know, it's one of the, it, it's a very, uh, you know, similar continent when you look at the, uh, the the fact that everyone lives in the woods, apparently. The, the lowest woody countries down here are like, yep, they're pretty much the same as the really far ones up here. Uh, this also proves the point that even though Europe is some of the most densely populated uh, parts of the world, still 90 plus percent of most of these countries is just forest that could be chopped down at any point in time. Should it be chopped down at any point in time? There's a fun question, isn't there? Also, I should mention right already, before anyone points it out, Spain and Portugal are the clear outliers to this map. And when you go to Spain, I've been to Madrid a few times, as well as Barcelona, every single time it's like, oh yeah, this this feels like a giant desert. This, this feels like a weird detached peninsula from the rest of Europe. Very strange, right? Looking at the average colors of Europe. Also, when we look at the average color by US state, you can see that west-east divide even more. And uh, yeah, I've always mentioned that the east coast feels more like Europe. And it physically literally does, right? It literally my bad. Uh, it physically, you know, here's the UK, my part of Europe. Here's, you know, New York, my current part of the United States. Wow, they're a similar tree color, and that explains why everything else is the same, or tree cover, I should say. Speaking of interesting things, here is the federal sales tax rate by the world. So, um, one of the, I guess, annoying things I feel like any YouTuber gets is whenever I finish the video and it's out there and it's public, I start to think about things that I could have done better or explained better or displayed better. And this is just objectively a much better map to show the sales tax rate by country worldwide. I like this map so much better. It's black and white. It doesn't it doesn't have those average colors going on, don't get me wrong. But what it does have going for it is it actually tells you the exact federal sales tax rate in every single country. So obviously some regions have their own uh, tax rates. So for instance, even though US is on on zero, um, I, you know, some states have higher. It's something like 8% in New York or San Francisco. Um, and even though Canada has a 5% federal sales tax, some provinces add another five onto that. It's it's very confusing very quickly. But uh, this is the actual federal sales tax in every country around the world. And it's so interesting to see that like, okay, Europe tends higher than average. Okay, Southeast Asia and East Asia tend, or, you know, this whole Southeast corner of the world, pretty low on average. There's Australia at 10, New Zealand at 15, Papua New Guinea at 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 five in Taiwan even, that's pretty cool. It's so interesting to see looking around the world at seeing uh, these different numbers, but it's also interesting to see that there are only a few countries of zero, uh, that is like a few of the Gulf states that obviously don't really need tax revenue, zero, 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 and that's the United States of America, because I, you know, you always hear like, oh yeah, the United States is that really unequal country. I mean, don't you know how, and it's like, wait, but the, the, you know, the tax that is often stated to be the most regressive, because sales tax, um, the, the reason it's so great is because you can collect it on everyone, regardless of immigration or legal status, because to buy things, it has to be transacted. But the reason people don't like it is because it's regressive, because um, poor people, it's, it's only based on consumption and not on savings or investments. And so poor people obviously need to buy more things as a portion of their uh, salary. But the United States has a 0% uh, sales tax rate, one of the only countries in the world to do so. And in fact, I imagine that'll actually change at some point in the future, but well, that, that's a whole other thing. Also, the other weird thing about this map is if you look over here, you can see that Bhutan has a 50% sales tax rate. And I looked into this, I really did. I was like, you know what? This has to be wrong. And according to tradingeconomics.com, it really is 50%. I, I looked into it more. I was like, well, that's gotta be wrong. It's gotta, you know, like Google's incorrect. So is tradingeconomics.com. I read so much into it to try and find 
like actual confirmed things from the government. I read this, I read this 32 page document from the Kingdom of Bhutan. Do you know how boring it was? Do you know how little information you find in a 40 page tax document from a country you're not from? I'll give you a clue, it's not very much, but they didn't tell me the answer there. And I, I, I wanted to, but long story short, Bhutan really does have a 40, a 50% sales tax rate, higher than any country in the world by almost a factor of two. It's crazy, but you know what? I, you know that, that raises questions. Why is it 50%? Isn't Bhutan supposedly one of the uh, happiest? It's one of the happiest countries on earth, right? Whereas all of these zero percent tax countries, the ones you see as unhappy, is there a direct link between happiness and high sales tax? I don't imagine that makes any sense, but I mean, this map seems to think so. Um, you know, like uh, if we look at some other unhappy countries, wow, low, uh, I think in reality what this map says is probably the more centralized the government is, the more it raises sales tax, VAT as we know it in Europe, because like, you know, you can do it and it's an easy way to make some money. Maybe that's what that really, really says, but this next uh, you know, map really says some interesting things and also implies some very interesting things about the world, because obviously the median age in the green countries is in the teens, in the yellow countries it's in the 20s, in the orange it's 30s, and in the red it's 40s. And this is wild, because it kind of tells you where humans are being spawned in the most, right? Like, you know, we, we as a human race produce uh, an inordinate number of millions of humans every single year, but most of those humans are spawning in the green zones. That's that's where they, that's where they're, you know, they're, they're first uh, you know, breath will ever be had. And it's so interesting to see that, like, okay, the green zones are very much uh, localized in one region of the world, sure. But it's also interesting to realize that, like, oh yeah, there is almost this direct correlation between wealth and age, but also, to me, it's like, oh, man, isn't it nutty? The average person in Germany and Japan, 46.1, is 30 point, uh, 31 years older than the average person in Niger. In fact, all of the young countries are here in uh, so in the uh, in Africa, it's very very wild to see, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It tells you some very interesting things. Kind of confirms a lot of already existing biases, but also it tells me stuff like, man, uh, we often have this assumption that like, yeah, all humans are like roughly the same. All all governments have like the same goals because we're all like the same people. Once you once you remove culture, once you remove tradition, and you remove ethnographic and religion, and all those factors, we're all just the same, right? But like, age is a big thing that fundamentally changes you, right? As you age, you do change. There is no uh, ignoring that. And so, given that the average, you know, the average 40-year-old in the UK or the average 46-year-old in Germany are going to have different priorities to the average 19.2-year-old in Madagascar over so many things, and that that's interesting too. You know what else is interesting? Uh, the the Anglosphere, which is like countries that outside of the Anglosphere are seen as like too close maybe. Uh, the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and sometimes the United States. Not only do they have a lot in common in the fact that they speak the same language. Hello people from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and the United States. I hear you watch my videos because we speak the same language, but also uh, we have a similarness in age demographics, and that's interesting too. Also, isn't it so weird to think that if you are from one of those countries and you're watching this video, your average age is probably below that medium by like almost a decade or two? Isn't that wacky to think about? You know what else is wacky to think about? The fact that the average age of your first marriage, as described by Wikipedia right here, can vary from like 18 to 20. It's like 18 in countries like the Central African Republic or in Somalia, or indeed Madagascar, whereas it's 33 to 35 in a country like Sweden, Iceland, uh, or Spain. And that is a very interesting cultural difference to me. Like the, this, this tells you a couple of things. One, it tells you like average age is higher to have average higher first marriages, right? Like if the average life expectancy is 50, then not many people are getting married at 45, right? It makes sense. And um, it also makes sense that this tells you the very different uh, roles that marriage can play. Whereas if you can, if you can leave it till you're 33 to 35, that means you're probably leaving it till after you've uh, had kids or decided not to, right? Whereas if you're having it when you're 18 to 20, there is a clear, clear, you know, clear path that you are heading down. Uh, and that's a very different, like, thing that you're doing. You know, one of the fundamental things you do as a human being is pair up or, you know, find someone to da 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 with. Uh, we will not say on this geography channel. Um, and uh, it's very interesting to realize that, like, the, the, the way that we formally put that together can vary so much by per country. Also, why is it that Australia and uh, Australia and the United States are about seven years younger than Ireland, 
despite all being uh, and Sweden, despite being pretty developed at the same time? Is it the higher uh, immigrant populations in those countries, or is there just a very different attitude when you live in such a vast country where you where you might die at any minute? Who knows for sure? Um, why is why is uh, you know there's there's so many different countries? Why is Russia surprisingly low? Why is China surprising? You know, China has this huge age uh, thing, but they're still getting married surprisingly young, right? 24 to 26. Uh, cultural values play into it there. Um, why is Japan so high then if cultural values are, you know, whatever. Very interesting map, right? Also interesting maps. Here's the interpersonal trust attitudes of various countries. The bluer it is, the more trust the country has and most people can be trusted, presumably within their country. And uh, the, 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 the greener it is, the less that's true. And so it's wild to, bear in mind, we'll ignore the great countries, they don't have data. It's wild to look at like a country like Brazil being like 10 90 percent of people are like yeah most people can't be trusted whereas even you know like if you look at the uk we're about 20 to 40 percent of people saying like yeah most people can be trusted and so yeah there's there's so many questions about this like why do the the nordic brothers trust each other so much and china um and because you know the, the immediate link is like oh yeah strong social policies what about Australia then? What about Saudi Arabia? <laughs> why why is it, for example, um, you know, that Spain is so low, you know, Spain and France, very strong social policies, so low down uh, compared to the United States? Or uh, there's so many different things that you can link into this. And I would honestly say, looking at this, the big question this raises is like, maybe the question is like asked in a different way. Maybe we have a different way that we answer the question more than actually having a different cultural attitude. What, what do you think? This is this is a map that only raises questions about like, how, how can you get any valuable data from this besides thinking your country's good if your country's blue? Or besides thinking that, you know, your country isn't dumb at least if your country isn't yellow. I mean, you know, if you're in Romania, you're like, yeah, everyone else is dumb. Of course people can't be trusted. That's why we lock our houses at night. Although they don't lock their houses at night in certain Swiss uh, in, in Liechtenstein too, the entire country. I, you know, so, I mean, obviously some people do it. You can never make generalizations. I don't like, I don't lock my door at night, even though I live in a country where most people do. Moved house, by the way. I'm going to start locking my door at night. You'll be pleased to know. Speaking of things you'll be pleased to know, did you know? <laughs> I've got to clarify that when I talk about my house on the internet. Here is a here is a time zone map of the world. As you can see, there's lots of time zones. And this map already raises questions about like, why is Iceland all the way in this time zone? Why is a tiny bit of Greenland over here in the in the GMT time zone. It's like, it's very far removed. Also, why is most of Greenland on minus three, but then there's this little bit over here. There's there's none of it on minus two. It's all minus three, minus one, or zero, whatever. There's so many questions that you can vaguely resolve, but the map that I love that I found recently is actually a, a, an animated one. I'm sorry to do this to you, internet. We're watching a GIF together, you know? So this is a map of the percentage of the world of sleeper awake as the day progresses. And this actually does a, uh, you know, th this map is so cool, right? So it shows you that, like, at roughly, uh, you know, again, <laughs> so it's, it's really interesting right here. About 95% of the world is awake at a given point in time at about uh, 2 p.m. in uh, the UK or about midday somewhere in Russia, right? That is insane that there is a point in the day where most human beings, like 6.3 billion, more than 6.3 billion, like 6.5 billion human beings, Probably, it's more like 7 point something billion human beings are awake at the same point in time, which means that guess what? If you if you go through to the opposite side, you can have a point in the day where 4 billion people on average are asleep. But the problem with this 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 GIF, as much as I love it, I love looking at this, I, I've gone through it a few times now, is they made the mistake of not realizing that the Southern Hemisphere has different daylight hours um, and therefore would sleep at slightly different times, right? As it, you know, I, I, I guess it's like a good like start to like how this this whole thing goes. But you know, long story short, um, this this is a and also yeah. I, long story short, everyone's always complaining about like, oh, we can't have a universal time zone because like, imagine being in Australia and it's like you know, ninety five percent of people have have the same awake time. We can we can we can do good stuff with that, right? Probably. Also, you know, here's the. I'm gonna ask the question. Everyone knows the answer, but we're not gonna give it. China is all on the same time zone, despite covering what should be four time zones. Wow, what reason could be for that? Also, the United States. Um, you know, if, if the U.S. was trying, because U.S. has four time zones plus Alaska and Hawaii, has like ten time zones if you count the Pacific Islands. We're not going to. But you, what we are gonna say is, if you look at the United States, you can see that like the time zone barriers follow really weird lines. And it's because um, it mostly goes by the states. Some states are split in two, and some states like Oregon let a few of their counties switch time zone 
And so you get some very, very strange boundaries. And speaking of strange boundaries, I don't have the, that. I, you know, I the, this video does not have any with you because we're going to talk about homosexuality. Wow, you, you wanted a video about maps? No, you're getting a video about homosexuality legality. Oh, that rhymes. That's good. So, um, did you know that um, in most countries it's legal to be a ho to to be gay? That is that is factual. You can do it if you really want to, unless you live in the young countries. Young country, young young correlates very strongly with not allowing homosexuality. Very interesting, right? You know what else is interesting? Looking at this map, seeing just how many like. So first of all, obviously, as we know, lots of countries that use religion as their guiding principle behind law uh, will kill you for your. Uh, homosexuality again uh, it's it's based on activity a lot of people say like you get punished for being gay and it's like that's true but I always have to be the stickler that's like you get punished for like I guess being being caught doing a whatever anyway so very very I I, I shouldn't be so minor on this because I feel like it's a very sensitive issue but you know what is the, the, the reason this map raises more questions is because if you look at it there's like okay a legal death penalty a legal life imprisonment Illegal imprisonment in general is punishment. But if you look at the blue countries, i.e. you look at Papua New Guinea, and you look at, uh, I, I believe, Tap Turkmenistan, you can see that it's male illegal, female legal. And you know what, Turkmenistan and Papua New Guinea, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there. You know, nice. But uh, more seriously, the reason for this is, um, I might, oh, also, I think uh, there's, a, oh, I forget the name of the country, is it Senegal? Um, but uh, if you look at the, uh, the map right here, you can probably assume, you might assume that like, hey, those lawmakers, yeah, me and you, same searches, am I right? But in reality, it's more like, oh, yeah, they probably just explicitly mentioned man on man because that's the type of gay that is most thought about as being uh, so criminal. But like, still, you know, I'm just saying, I, I, if you were two women, I would not recommend going to Turkmenistan as lovers, maybe, who, who knows for sure, uh, until the future. Speaking of things that should be done in the future, um, this map of vegetarianism by country. I, uh, I I think I've, this is one of my like controversial opinions amongst people who are like very strong meat eaters. Cause I, I like meat. I, I have a steak in the fridge. I ordered, I ordered takeout from a steakhouse because I got a, you know, long story short, I, I Uber eated some steak here. What are you going to do about it? So anyway, I eat meat and, um, but I've always had this opinion that like, yeah, I eat meat, but I feel like the future is definitely in not. It's just so inefficient to grow food then feed that food to your food, and then eat the food. It feels like we could skip a step there. And given the amount of emissions it creates and the shipping, and the, there's just so many problems with eating meat in the long run. And so here's the map of vegetarianism, i.e. people who do not eat meat, generally don't eat fish as well. Some people call themselves vegetarian if they eat fish. And I agree, you know, fish are just like little sea carrots going along doing their own thing. But side note, um, you know, like, anyway, so the, as you can see, looking at this map, uh, this is vegetarianisms in vegetarians in every country. And, uh, you know, there's an interesting thing that, like, you assume that, like, oh, wow, uh, look how strongly vegetarian Australia and New Zealand are. Look at how strongly... and But, like, really what it is is, like, oh, yeah, most of the reason people are vegetarian is either religion or money-based. And that's what these countries, right... This this country, I should say. Embarrassing. It, 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 you know what? Embarrassing mistake is so vegetarian. That's why China is so vegetarian. In fact, if you look at this map again, but we kind of take it at another angle... Because, uh, you know, Brazil, Brazil, Australia, and, uh, you know, China are very strongly vegetarian countries compared to the rest. But if we go to this second map of meat consumption uh, per capita, Brazil, Australia, and China are all at some of the highest levels in the world. I think Brazil is, like, one of the top five countries in terms of meat consumption. And so it's interesting because, like, oh, even on an individual level, a ton of people are foregoing meat. <laughs> The other people are eating such a high amount above average that it just balances out to nothing, which I find funny. Uh, whereas India, uh, where people are just, you know, like, either can't afford it or they they, they have the religious restriction, as indeed uh, the north of the country tends to have, not a lot of meat consumption. They've worked it out. How do we stop people eating meat? We make it religion. I actually, I have a whole meat rant we should go into sometime about, like, we need to just make meat alternatives better than meat and cheaper than meat. Well, right now... We have sometimes better than meat, but it's more expensive, or we have cheaper than meat and it, it tastes like sadness. I don't know, like, I don't know how that's, like, not one of our big aims. Actually, I do know how, why it's not one of our big aims. Like, farming subsidies. We like farmers. We want to keep them happy. And that's why, you know, speaking of things, uh, you know, if you were a farmer, no, let's not use that as our transition. Let's use this next map of average IQ level per country to talk about something interesting, right? Because I, 
I have, uh, you know, I, I used to be a big believer in the idea of like IQ because I mean, it is supposedly this, you know, like uh, so the average IQ score is 100 if you don't know. And the idea is that it's meant to measure your intelligent quotient. It shouldn't be affected by your education, how much you know. It should be your ability to solve problems. And uh, I always, I used, always used to like the idea, but this is a map that really, uh, you know, like so I, I've seen a few people use stuff like this to prove some grand point about, I don't know, Asian supremacy. We can totally take that one too, sure. Big fan. But uh, the bigger th point that I take from this map is uh, why in IQ, you know, like I, I used to really want to use IQ as like at least an idea, but IQ as a measurement, we use it right now, just doesn't work. As Because if it did, you know, because if you look at the sub-Saharan Africa, if you just look at Africa as a whole, um, you know, sure, you can make some racial point that really, are they, are they hot? You know, it's not half as small. It's like that significantly below average on the IQ scores. And it's like, no, what this really tells us is countries that have good education systems or a strong education culture, like Korea and uh, China, um, those countries that have a strong, uh, you know, thing in there can actually make you score higher on these tests. So the tests as they exist right now don't really work. I, I feel like there might be, it's, it's possible that if we do find some objective measure of intelligence, you might find differences based on, uh, your country and your, cause you know, people have very different DNA, but people use this to make like some much grander point about, um, you know, like various different things than I think the data really is pointing to. Uh, do I, do I really think people in the UK, uh, you know, are smarter than people in, uh, you know, France? Well, I mean, of course I do. Uh, do I really think that people in, uh, you know, like for instance, Myanmar are smarter than people in, uh, India? I don't really think that's true. And, uh, yeah, I, I feel like this map kind of shows that like education standards play a strong role in intelligence when in theory, intelligence should be this innate unmeasured thing from birth. Also, you know what, the, the, if you, in case you don't like that as my justification, on this map, as you can see, it's not, it's the UK, Sweden, Germany, uh, Aus Austria, um, as well as uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Italy that all have above average IQs. I'm just saying, that's the biggest proof you need that it's wrong. If Belgium has an above average IQ, you know, if they're so smart, then why are they living in Belgium? Checkmate, they're not actually very smart. And so yeah, long story short, uh, this, this map is kind of a bit misleading in that way. Speaking of maps that are misleading, here is the map of the Gini coefficient of wealth inequality. Basically, it measures wealth inequality by country. And this map, uh, this map tells you one of two, I, I think this has the same thing as the IQ map. And I want to talk about it because like, if you look at the worst country in the world for wealth inequality, it's the Netherlands, a country that is famously very, um, <laughs> I don't want to use egalitarian as a word, but like they, they have a strong social, it, it's a, it's a country that's used as a great example of like happy, great, good stuff. Uh, whereas one of the, one of the best countries for wealth inequality is over here, Myanmar, as you can see. Wow. So Myanmar with their, what is that? Like above average IQ, oh, that average IQ uh, scoring and their, uh, below average wealth inequality must be the best place to live on earth. Right. Except like, mm, I don't know about that one. Um, the, <laughs> you know, what's the worst countries to live in in Europe, according to this map. It's the Netherlands, Sweden, Germany, and Ukraine. And it's like, well, putting them together feels like, uh, I, 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 wealth inequality is a interesting statistic because it makes this assumption that like, oh yeah, if there's 10 people on an island and they earn, you know, $500 each, they're all perfectly equal and equal means happy for some reason. But then you, then a billionaire moves to the island and now everything is ruined and like it, <laughs> it's the most inequalation on earth. And it's like, yeah, I think trying to, especially wealth inequality, like money that is generally not accessed very often. Um, I feel like it has a lot of problems in trying to actually take things from it. And I think this is our, our big problem. We, we tend to measure, we over measure things that feel bad, like inequality just feels bad, right? Knowing, knowing that someone will have more money than I'll have in my life feels bad, but I shouldn't use that that jealousy or that bad feeling as a way to actually decide where is a good country or a bad country or, you know, like how to make big social decisions. Uh, or maybe we should, you know, what? honestly, would you like to reduce the inequality between me and Jeff Bezos? I bet you would. That's why you got to go to patreon.com slash toy cat. Seriously, apparently six of you became patrons last time. I literally, I explicitly mentioned the money would only be used for bad things. I, I said, you know what? This, do you see this video? It's just me recording my screen. I don't know how you could take from that that you should go to patreon.com slash toycat and become a patron, but I'm disappointed in all of you that did. You've done this all wrong and you, you misunderstand the point. 
Uh, look at this. Do you see this flag? It's not even like properly uploaded. It's a really low resolution. I didn't even make my Patreon correctly. And so, yeah, you know, disappointed in all of you that went to the link down below. Also, uh, just an exciting thing I wanted to talk about. Here is the, ex oh, I, I looked at the comment. You know what, can you tell that I voted Singapore on this poll? The, uh, I'm, I'm still doing the World Cup of all the countries, and we're on round 41, probably, as you watch this, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's it's going pretty well. We, we, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I've got almost all of them ready, and we're going to be moving into round two soon. So make sure to vote every day. I, I, I try not to vote, but you know what? Let's, let's make our vote right here. Wait, you can still vote from polls over a day ago? Do polls never run out? Can you go back and... You know what, we can. Let's let's go vote Let's go vote for Nicaragua. Ah, oh, I'm wrong. Let's go vote... Should I do my own polls and see if I can pick the right country? I think New Zealand would beat the Netherlands here. Oh, I'm wrong. Um, okay, what about... I think Monaco's got the clear win. Oh, Morocco. Well, <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Spelt it, got it wrong. Uh, so, I think Monaco or Moldova... Oh Mon no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a Mong Ugh. I I think I, I think Mongolia won because it's the it's the coolest country. Yeah, look at that, Mongolia. I mean, it's, it was on the a lot of people are gonna be complaining about the results of this. If you don't like the results, vote better. That's all I'm saying. You're you're the ones doing this, not me. Speaking of things you're doing wrong, watching this video when you should be, I don't know, uh doing other things of your day. You you go uh, you go go do real things, I I hope. Thank you for watching this. Oh, I can vote my own polls because they're not my own polls. I'm logged into a different channel. Speaking of things I'm logged into, your heart. Thank you for putting me in there. But I'm going to have to go now and enjoy my last few days here in uh, the pearly gates of heaven and or Greenland or actually uh, New York. So uh, I've got an exciting thing coming out this week and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Unless I don't.